What's up guys, my name is Jared, this is Bailey, and we travel full time in this 2003 4x4 uh, ambulance. Uh, we got started in this lifestyle just because I wanted something totally different. I was in the business world and I wasn't fulfilled. I found myself stressed out and it, it started leading to the point where uh, it was affecting my health and I needed to make a drastic change. I found out about van life and as a traveler I wanted something that uh, could take me anywhere I wanted to go without limitations. So I was looking for a van with the four-wheel drive and diesel and everything that I was looking for was fulfilled by this. So just like everybody else uh, looking to transition into van life, I was looking at every single option from sprinters to promasters, uh, sports mobiles, and I, and I had a range of what I was able to spend on it from the truck, including the build. And uh, I found this on Facebook Marketplace in Pennsylvania. Uh, and I flew out there one way, uh, bought the truck, drove it all the way back to San Diego. Uh, it was not built out at all. It was an active ambulance when I bought it. Uh, so I'm sleeping on the bench seat. It smells like an ambulance. Uh, I'm, I'm creeped out about the spooks that might be in there from <laughs> no telling how many people have died in this thing. But as soon as I started building it out and, and customizing it to my liking, it, it started to feel more like a home instead of just another van or especially uh, an ambulance. Uh, so welcome to the interior of the ambulance. One of the biggest downsides of this vehicle, uh, just to, to mention some of the negatives about it, is I can't stand up fully. Uh, so I've installed this uh, Max Air fan and right here is the only place aside from the front door that I can stand up completely straighten out my neck a little bit I totally notice it I hit my head all the time <laughs> um, but you got to compromise I really wanted the four-wheel drive I wanted the diesel um, and I wanted to stay under a certain price so I was willing to give up being able to stand up straight and I don't regret it um, but it's it's something to something to get used to so we'll get started with the kitchen area uh, when I first moved into this uh, there was just a, a plastic tray here and it had stains all over it from no telling what kind of bodily fluids were on that thing uh, so I ripped everything out um, and I installed this IKEA uh, concrete look-alike countertop another cool thing about buying an ambulance is all of the electricity is already run the 12 volts already run as well as the AC power so if you look behind my blender here these outlets I've got four AC outlets and my 12 volt outlet already installed um, and if we move this way I've just bolted my laptop case to the side of that so it's easy access. One of the things that I discovered um, is I want to be working online a lot more and in using my computer and without it being easily accessible I made a lot of excuses not to do work because now I got to go dig it out and I got to go find the charger and um, so this was a really easy idea for me to keep everything front and center so I could just unzip it and have access. One of the other cool things about having an ambulance is it comes factory with these awesome cabinets. People love these cabinets. Uh, they are sliders. And uh, the downside is that you can see all of the junk thrown in there, uh, but you can easily tint these things and make them look nice. But they work for me. Uh, these are built for being on the road. They're built for vans. So uh, I see some other people that when they build these types of vehicles, they rip it all out and start fresh. And for me, these are already, they're, they're, they're solid. They're not rattling around. Everything's uh, set in place. So I'm really happy with the cabinets. Uh, the shelving was already in it. Uh, so really all I had to do was go in and throw some stuff in there and um, a friend of mine put these labels on here. That is not me, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was, it was just a little help in keeping things organized. I feel like I have adequate food storage in here. I keep these two full of food as well as uh, this side and this side are full of all my dried goods. Um, and then I have a refrigerator, which I'll get to sh shortly, but all, plenty of storage for all of my dry foods. It's just me and my dog, so we don't need a whole lot. And I think it would probably be enough for me if I had a, a, another person with me as well. Uh, so this is the factory instrument panel that came with the ambulance. A lot of the stuff I don't actually need. So I do use the lights, the light switches on here. Um, as, and I added this switch here. This is gonna be for my water pump, which is not currently hooked up. But a lot of this stuff is designed so if the medics are in the back and the driver needs to know something, you can send codes based off of color that show up in the front cab. That way the driver knows, hey, I need to hurry up or I need to do whatever. Um, but there's also AC and heat uh, control on the panel. And that is right up here. Uh, the downside of that is the only way to use it is if the truck is running and for me living in the van doesn't work because then my truck has to run all the time to stay cool to stay warm uh, so I, I i don't even use the the factory system that came with it i've installed my own system which i'll, I'll come around to show you guys this is a battery cutoff switch but i've uh, made it for a different use. This is actually wired to my inverter. So instead of having my power on all the time and draining up my battery, this 
turns my inverter on and off and you can you can see the the light come on here whenever the switch is on if i turn it off it shuts it all off so in building the van i really thought about because i was living in an apartment and I, I thought what do i need to feel like it's a home and not just a van and so everything else that you saw earlier um, and i decided to go ahead and add a stove i need to be able to cook uh, this is a amazon stove i haven't screwed the lid down yet but uh, it is run on propane and I've run the propane tube behind the counter and into the back cabinet and it has these dividers here so if I want to cook if I want to cook with the door open to have some fresh air in here I don't have to worry about the wind blowing my flame around or you know since it's right next to the bed I don't have to worry about it catching it on fire so when I'm done with it close these up close the top and it keeps it looking nice I've only been cooking uh, in the van for a, a little over a month, maybe two months, and it's two burners. For myself, it's, it's more than enough. Really, all I do is, is uh, run one pan at a time or make coffee on here, so it's, it's absolutely plenty for me. Uh, behind it, I, I wanted, there, I think there was some small aesthetic touches that really made this place feel like a home instead of a van, so I, I did the peel and stick uh, subway tile backdrop, which uh, everything that I've done in here, I've learned how to do on YouTube. Uh, and if you look really closely, which we're not going to do, you can see the flaws where I screwed it up. Uh, but I really like how it looks. It, it really creates the home in-home feeling. I've also put a hinge in the middle of the countertop. So I cut it right here. Uh, that way, whenever I need to access my camera gear, which I keep stored under here, and then below that is uh, extra food storage. So a lot of my dried foods are stored under here. Uh, I can lift this up and access that. It also makes it a lot easier to make the bed as well. Uh, so right here is a handle and what used to be right here before this counter and the stove were installed, this was a seat and there was a pad here and a pad here where uh, it, like a jump seat for one of the medics. Uh, and this handle would open up that lower seat so you could reach inside and keep storage under there. I cut the seat completely out um, and use it for dry food storage uh, and camera gear and then put my stove right on top of it trying to make as many uses out of a small space. Um, and then just like everybody else, I decided to add, add the magnetic knife strip. I think they look, they look great, um, but I do worry about poking myself sometimes when I have things stored right here. Not, not happened yet. And they don't fall off. So when I first toured this vehicle, like I said in the beginning, this was an active ambulance. Uh, so I got to see where they kept everything and this was simply used to keep rubber gloves. And so they would reach in there, pull the rubber gloves out. And um, it's kind of my junk drawer without the drawer it's just visible you can see all my junk my heartburn stuff <laughs> a lighter some uh, cliff bars my thermometer so i can keep track of the temperature in here what's the humidity like having a dog in the van it's important for me to monitor all that stuff so in building the van uh, one of the things i thought about i'm a single guy me and my dog but i i knew at some point i may end up meeting somebody and, and traveling with that person and i didn't, I didn't want to have to go back and remodify the entire van so I, I really tried to build everything for two people up front uh so um looking at the bed uh this is a full-size bed it's one of the ones you get on amazon in a box it's a 10 inch memory foam mattress which is awesome i love it there's a few downsides to it but really for what i'm doing i was able to open it up when i received it and cut off a nice edge of it which you can't do with a typical mattress that way I could really fit it into the exact space that I was looking for so when I was making the transition I started my journey in San Diego and I I was still in the process of, of liquidating and getting rid of all my stuff so anybody looking to transition to van life or those that have done it you know that uh, you're, when you're downsizing from an apartment or a house with a garage there's a lot of stuff to get rid of and even after I sold as much as I could there was still a lot of stuff and so I needed to make as much storage as I can. Uh, so one of the things I added is I added a uh, elastic netting above the bed, um, which is where I just keep the light thing. So if it falls on top of me, it's not gonna hurt. So I definitely don't store my skateboard or anything like that, uh, but it's great for an extra towel, my winter gear, uh, maybe some toilet paper, and then the, the window deflectors, the covers. Looking at the storage over here, uh, just like the other cabinets, this one was already here, and this is where I keep the overflow of food. Um, this over here, back in here, was already there. This was a, a countertop with the ambulance. And I, uh, I'm still in the build process and I'm still trying to figure out where everything goes. I'm relatively new to living in a van. So at this point, it's, it's really just various stuff. My towel, my extra camera, um, some things that need to go into storage. And then this cabinet over here is my hygiene products and, uh, and then, you know, uh, pet CBD and uh, Motrin, things like that, just my, my medicine and whatnot. 
if you come down here, this is, before I even tell you what it is, looking for a refrigerator was, it took me a long time to sort that out. I didn't know if I wanted to do an upride, if I wanted to do a reach in, and then when I looked online, they were super expensive. Um, and at the end of the day, I decided if I'm living in here, I need to spend the extra money and just get a good refrigerator freezer. So what I did is I bought the, uh, the winter 62 quart fridge freezer. And instead of spending $300 on the slide out that you can buy, I bought 500, 500 pound drawer slides off of Amazon, mounted it to a, a tray, and it slides right out from under the bed. That's the fridge side, that's the freezer side, and you can actually program it so the entire unit is a refrigerator or the entire unit is a, fr uh, a freezer, or you can separate it into both, whatever you want, it gives you the option. So this was really a good unit for me, and I ended up spending, uh, I think it was right around like 750 bucks for it. One of the other reasons that I bought this fridge or this unit is uh, the power consumption. It is run on 12 volt. Um, I was having some problems with the plug that goes into the outlet, um, and I noticed that that is the same on all of them, and I, I, it's, it was really just a poor design, so I, I literally just cut the plug off and I hardwired it uh, straight to my fuse box and straight to the battery. So this this unit runs all the time. I never turn it off um, And if I absolutely need to then I can reach over and unplug it from the side um, As far as space is concerned at 62 quarts um, I mean it's what I have to realize is I'm not in a house anymore So I'm not going to get the same storage. So I, I do wish I had a little bit more um, But for the amount of space that I have in here, this is it's a smaller rig uh, So this is actually quite a bit of space for them for the for the size of the vehicle that I'm living in so one of the most important parts of van life for me is having companionship I know when I when I look at a lot of other uh, van lifers one of the questions they primarily get is is it lonely I get that question a lot as well and I have a wonderful companion and her name is Bailey she's nine years old got her on Craigslist for free eight years ago and she is awesome I love having a dog um, it's someone to keep me company it's also an excellent security source as soon as someone sees the dog coming in I, I feel that no one's even going to think about breaking into my van because they're going to have to get through her to get to anything in the van um, and it's a great conversation starter a lot of people see the dog they see the van they want to come over and say hi uh, so i'm constantly engaged in new conversations and meeting a lot of people so if you're thinking about do you want to have a pet in van life absolutely do it do not get rid of your pet to do this keep your dog keep your cat and bring them along with you just make it work so moving over this way uh, behind here this is just one of my guards and uh, this is an area that i'm still uh, developing i haven't figured out exactly how i want to do it uh, but i just have a box of shoes that's literally what it is and then some various stuff under it I just keep that tucked up there to keep it looking decent um, dog food and water I'd like to build a permanent station for that I just haven't sorted out where that's gonna go yet so as of right now that's where it sits right over here this little junk area uh, is a it's a little storage area on the other side of it is um, external access so I can reach under the bed and access it or I can go outside of the truck open the door and access it from there so a lot of the times if I need to throw something in I I'm, I'm already outside I just open it up stuff it in there and if I need it in here I can just reach my arm back there and grab it uh, but these these are some of the parts of the van that still need some innovation and some development right here is my composting toilet so I, w I was really looking at do I want to have a toilet and for me it was a no-brainer that I'm, I'm gonna need to have a toilet if I'm just traveling in the van maybe not but if I'm living in the van I don't want to have to go to Starbucks when I need to use the bathroom um, or if you're sick I've been sick in the van like stomach illness and uh, you don't want to not have a bathroom when you're feeling that way and you're living in your vehicle so uh, I was looking at my toilet options I saw the cassette toilet and it seemed like a, a mess um, and then I saw the, the composting toilets, the ones you buy, and they're, they're nearly $1,000, and I thought, maybe I could build one. And so I started watching build videos, and I decided to design my own. I spent about 60 bucks building my composting toilet. For your for the courtesy for you, I'm not gonna open it. Um, but essentially what it is, is there's a bucket inside. Um, I do use coconut core composting material. Um, and then I have a urine diverter. So um, you pee into the urine diverter, it goes into its own jug and I can take that and empty it. And then the bucket uh, with the composting material keeps the smell at bay. And then I also have a three inch coupling with a computer fan down inside with a hole through the floor. So it's constantly sucking uh, odor and moisture out of the vehicle. So it's, it is helping to break down uh, 
poop inside of the vehicle. So, um, you know, as we're doing this, this tour right now, uh, you can ask Chris, there's no smell in here at all uh, regarding the bathroom and it is actively being used. If I had an extra thousand dollars towards my build, I probably would buy one of the, the higher end composting toilets. Um, I would say the only real downside that I'm experiencing with it, it's not even the, the poop part, really that's that's pretty manageable. Uh, it's the pee because it's a liquid. Uh, so when you go to change it, one is you gotta make sure you don't overfill your bottle because as soon as you disconnect it, uh, you're gonna have a mess. That has not happened to me yet because I keep a, a close eye on it. Um, but it does, you know, with a lot of shaking around, um, inevitably there's some drops whenever I uh, go to change it. So it can be messy on the hands and it's just something you really got to keep clean. But I think it's going to be the same even if you buy the higher end toilet. A lot of the guys I see do reviews on the, the composting toilets they bought. They say a very similar thing. So I'm happy that I spent 60 bucks and I have a functioning toilet um, that's that's manageable and easy to deal with. Uh, so a very simple thing that I did is, is in the van, in a space this small, you need to make multiple uses of everything. I'm not done with the toilet yet. If you look at it, I still have this um, this ugly board on top of it, um, which I'll you know I'll come back and decorate it. But what I want to do is I want to get a proper uh, lid on top of this with a pad so I can sit on it, and this can also double as my workstation. Uh, right now, I just have a uh, a little pad that goes to my kayak that I throw up there, so I can sit right here, break my computer out, and that can be a spot where I can sit and do work whenever I'm not using it as a as a toilet. If you look up here, uh, one of the things that's really cool about it already being an ambulance is they put padding on everything. So I hit my head in here constantly and luckily uh, everything's already armored up so I have yet to split my head open. Um, it mostly just shocks me, <laughs> um, especially the metal bar that'll that'll leave you dizzy but it's, it's not going to cut me open which is cool. Um, and then with all, all these windows, I love the light that comes in here. There's a lot of windows already built into this. None of these open. The one on the side door does open, but I, I got these, uh, I got this reflecting material. Uh, you can get that on uh, Amazon. You can get it at Lowe's, Home Depot. And I took spray on adhesive and I sprayed one side and I just stuck black fabric on one side of it, which I still need to trim the edges. I haven't done that yet. It's on my long list of a thousand things I still need to do. Uh, but the cool thing is whenever you stick this in the window, it blacks out your windows and covers the light inside and out. That way, if, uh, if a police officer is driving behind you or another car, if they see this reflecting material, they're gonna immediately suspect that someone's inside. If they see this black, uh, which does not reflect, it just looks like it's dark inside. These cabinets up above the bed, uh, just like everything else, these were already in the ambulance. Um, I, I simply just used them for closed storage. I'm still trying to manage how I fold my clothes. They're not that deep, so they, they really just go right there. Organization is probably one of the biggest keys to being successful and living in a van and keeping things, things tidy. And that's a part of self-development that I'm working on so I can just have a nice place other than the build, actually have a nice way of managing my stuff. Still working on that. So from this angle, you're looking at the front of the vehicle. And right here is my sliding door that goes to the cab. I love, love, love having a sliding door. I'll give you a downside and an upside. The downside is I can't put a swivel on the seats and turn them around and have this open to make a desk like a lot of people do in their sprinters and ProMasters when they build those out. But one of the cool things is uh, because I am stealth camping, and by the way, I know I'm saying stealth in an ambulance, it's called hiding in plain sight. People look at this, Yes, it draws a lot of attention, especially with the dog in the front, but when you look at it, you never suspect that someone's sleeping inside. Uh, and it has a one-off small town name on it, so nobody knows what it is. I can park anywhere, and I've never, ever, ever had my door knocked on, which is fantastic. And that's including sleeping in downtown San Diego and various places. Back to the door. What I love about the door is uh, when I'm driving and I'm looking for a place to park at night, I'll, I'll find a grassy field, I'll get out, take my dog, let her use the bathroom before bed, get back in the van, go and drive to where I actually want to stay for the night. I put my shade up in the wind, in the front window and then we climb through the back door so no one ever sees us exit the vehicle. And I think that's one of the keys to being stealthy in the van instead of having to get out and walk around. So I love having that, that access uh, between the front cab and the rear. If we come over here, this is one of my favorite cabinets. It is massive. It's a huge amount of storage. What I've decided to do with it is this is my instant hot water heater. And if you look right back here, there's my shower head. 
the shower is coming soon. I wish I would have had it done for this build, but the shower is going to be installed right where I'm standing, uh, and it's going to be flush mounted into the floor. So whenever you want to shower, you take the lid off, you stand in the shower pan, and you can pull. You can pull the shower head out, and then we'll mount it up here uh, to take a shower inside. Because of where it's mounted, that is actually a door on the exterior, so I can actually go outside and take a shower outside or inside. It's totally my option based off of it's, if it's snowing or if it's just really nice out and I want to do it out there. Um, under here, I've installed a diesel parking heater. Uh, now, I know there's some name brand ones that, that my understanding they cost like $2,000. That wasn't allocated in my budget, so I found this one on, I believe, eBay. Um, and don't hesitate to try eBay. I, I was really stuck on Amazon as my source, and I didn't try anything else, and someone showed me eBay. Um, and it's not just bidding on things. You can actually go on and just buy stuff. And I thought you had to like bid on everything. That's just because I didn't know anything about eBay. So I went on, I found this diesel parking heater. I love it. It was $165-ish. Um, and on the lowest setting, I have to turn the heater off after about 20 minutes because it gets too hot in here. So even for a large rig, I think it's more than enough to keep your rig hot. Um, they do not come with instructions. And this is not just mine. I've heard this from other people that buy the cheap Chinese ones. Um, so I just went on YouTube. I learned how to do it. And I do have a build video on how I installed it, which I'll be uploading by the time that you get to see this. For the rest of this storage, if you move up here, it's just a shelf, uh, it's adjustable in height, and I, I just throw my, uh, my pots, pans, and my various Tupperware up there. I'll close this, and this is the cool thing about the ambulance doors, they just latch into place, and these things are solid. Right up here, I have no idea what they use this for, but I put a couple hooks on here. This is where I'll, I'll dry my towel, or I'll hang my hoodie when I'm not wearing it. And I keep my coffee cups, a uh, couple boxes of cereal, one of my extra pans spoon and bowl that I may reuse and earlier I mentioned the the heater that the heater and air conditioner that was already built into it this is it it takes up a huge amount of space so I'm thinking about removing it and using it for more storage but it's there I might hook it back up in case I ever need it as a backup in Alaska or something like that over here there was a, a vent in place that went to the side of the uh, to the side of the heater I took the vent out and it's the perfect poop bag storage station and this is the thermostat and controls for the parking heater so in every ambulance that you look at you're gonna have a station like this I have it screwed shut so I can't really open it but this is where all of the electronics are uh, for the ambulance um, and then right here um, I also put a screw in this so I can't use it right now but this is where I mount my uh, my mountain bikes so a lot of people put their bikes outside two reasons I didn't want to do that three reasons one is I didn't want them to get weathered I didn't want them to get stolen and I didn't want to give away that I'm sleeping in my vehicle as soon as you see mountain bikes you know this is a camper uh, so right here the front fork mounts to this I put one bike here and then I bungee strap the other one side by side to it and it's on a drawer slide that way whenever I need to access this area behind me I can slide the bikes over out of the way and I can get in here and get whatever I need at this point this is a junk storage um, soon uh, because I am still building this is going to be my closet so I can actually have clothes hung up and wrinkle free instead of the stuff that I'm stuffing inside of the cabinets. One of the number one things that I recommend doing immediately when you start your van build next to doing the solar is installing a fan. I was living in here for probably a month and a half with no ventilation and sometimes it's fine if it's cold outside it's fine when it's hot it is hot and it gets humid and it gets stuffy and I have a dog, it starts to smell like a stinky dog. As soon as she goes out there and rolls in something, I'm in here roasting in it, it's terrible. <laughs> so uh, I was looking at fan options. I know there's the Fantastic Fan and I know there's the Max Air Fan, which are the two most popular. I wanted something that I could drive with it open in case I forget, which I, all, I, don't, I don't even forget anymore. Honestly, I just leave it open. And with the amount of solar I have, I always leave it on. So there's constantly fresh air uh, moving out and um, I've had it in hailstorms, I've had it in rain uh, with it open and I've had no problems with it. So um, I don't get anything for it, but I do endorse the Max Air Fan, I'm happy with it. I'm gonna show you one of the main reasons that I decided to go with an ambulance, aside from everything that you've seen on the inside, is the amount of external storage. So I'm gonna start here. This door is pretty cool because it allows me to access right here on the inside of the vehicle. 
Uh, as you saw earlier, this is where the shower is and the shower head's right here. So if I want to do an outside shower, it's right there and ready to go. Also, if you look over here, this is where the, the fuel cell is for the diesel heater that's located on the inside. And there's another extra storage panel right behind here. That's where I keep the life jackets uh, for my kayak, which I'll show you shortly. The door down here, this is the extra start batteries that come built into the ambulance. I think all ambulances have them and as a diesel, um, you're gonna have at least two batteries anyway. I have a total of three batteries that came factory with this thing. And as you came in earlier, this is the entrance door. That's where I like to hang my longboard and my, uh, my tripod for my camera. All right, so if we come to the rear of the truck here, one of my favorite things about it is the amount of storage and this is where I keep all of my tools. Uh, one of the other things I have in here, I like to give these away to people. I am an Amazon seller and I sell LGBT long distance relationship bracelets. That's where I keep those. So I can give them away to people as gifts on the road. All right, so moving around to the rear of the vehicle, this is what other people consider the garage. I feel like this entire thing is a giant garage. I have room for everything. Uh, more storage for tools. This is a 42 gallon water tank. Um, because I'm still building my van, I haven't fully hooked it up yet, uh, but I have all the stuff here. It's just one of those things I need to get to along with my list of 10,000 other things. One of the great things about the ambulance and the storage is it's not just a little storage, it's a massive amount of storage. This is a floor to ceiling storage cabinet. And right now it's just various stuff. Anybody looking at getting an ambulance, the world is yours of whatever you wanna to try to build or store in there. I've seen other people even build showers inside of there. All right, if you come over to here, this is where all the goods are. Um, I'll start at the bottom. This is where I keep my inflatable kayak. They're on Amazon for 80 bucks. I love these things, they're awesome. Uh, me and my dog go kayaking together all over the country, up in Canada, uh, it's fantastic. Uh, it's one of the cool things you can do in national parks with your dog, because they don't allow them on trails, is you can take them out in the kayak. Uh, right up here is all of the goods for the electronics. I chose to go lithium. Uh, this is a 100 amp hour Battleborn battery. Some people go with a, a, a whole array of batteries. I so far have only need, needed the one and I've never even been close to depleting it. Um, and it's because we have 800 watts, two 400 watt LG solar panels, they're commercial panels that I put up top. Um, I also found out as soon as you put them on your van, it voids the warranty. So when you're thinking about your panels, just know that that's a thing. Um, but it is more than enough solar up there to keep my one battery charged and it costs me less to have those massive panels than it does to buy multiple lithium batteries. So that's my recommendation. You can ask Will Prowse, he's probably more of an expert on this, uh, but this is my opinion as an amateur. Uh, it's kind of hard to see back here. I've got it tucked in the back, but I went with the 80 amp Outback charge controller, uh, which has been fantastic. And then uh, I just keep random connectors in here. Uh, just in case something goes wrong, my voltage meter is a do-it-yourselfer. Uh, I try to be prepared for anything and I've, I've really just been a student. I did not hire anybody. I really just learned how to do this all myself. That way if it breaks, I know how to go back and fix it. Also, another ambulance feature is it already comes with an inverter. Uh, I don't know how many watts this is. It doesn't just say it on the side and I haven't looked it up, but I think it's about a 1500 watt inverter. Uh, the cool thing about it is it's also an inverter charger. Uh, so what I can do is whenever I go uh, to where there's shore power, I can undo this plug, plug that in an extension cord, and I can do that to either charge my lithium battery if I need it, if it's, if it's snowing and I don't have access to charge my panels, or there's another cable here that I can disconnect up here and plug that in and this will charge the battery to my engine and the other auxiliary batteries on the other side of the truck. Last but not least, this is the final storage compartment, another floor to ceiling storage. This was all enclosed and this is where they kept the oxygen bottle whenever it was an ambulance and they used this uh, real strong diamond plate that way if uh, there's a leak or if the panel or if the uh, oxygen bottle exploded it's all self-contained in there in an accident uh, so really durable stuff uh, what i decided to do is i cut out the back side of that that way all of this up here i can access from the inside of the vehicle and then I did a separator right here and I keep my propane right here. That way if I have a propane leak, it's gonna be confined to the exterior cabin of the vehicle, uh, which does, you can't see it from where you're at, but down here there's ventilation uh, to move that smell out. I do have a detector just in case. And then this is just various stuff, uh, things I've been carrying on the road with me, extra screws, bolts, seat belts, uh, and then my toolbox. 
This is gonna get modified later, uh, just cause right now if I wanna get to my tools, I gotta pull all this out. Uh, so I'm gonna add some more shelving uh, a little bit later on my list of 10,000 things. So the actual base of the vehicle, it's a 2003 Ford E350, 7.3 liter turbo diesel van cutaway. It was modified before it ever went to the, the company that, was, that turned this into an ambulance. It was converted by Quigley into a four-wheel drive system, which is fantastic. Uh, if you look at the side of it, you can tell that it has a little bit more lift uh, and longer coil suspension than a standard van and I actually have a higher ground clearance. They also put in uh, airbag suspension on the rear so I can raise and lower that, uh, which helps take some of the beating out of the bumps when you're hitting those. They've also put in, because this was a mountain town ambulance, they put this heavy duty grill guard on the front. And if you don't mind, come back over here with me to the side. I forgot to show this to you. I thought this was funny. I love animals, don't get it twisted, love animals, but uh, I was a fighter jet mechanic and, and in the old days whenever they would shoot down an aircraft they would put a little insignia of an aircraft on the side to show how many shoot downs they had and out in the mountain town they hit a couple deer and so they put the deer that they've hit in the vehicle on the side of that. I just thought it was interesting so I left that on there. So for the front of the vehicle, um, it still has uh, the front flashing lights that come with it. Uh, there's also the sirens and then over on that side it has a PA system and the PA is located on the inside of the vehicle. So as I mentioned on the other side of the van uh, it does have the 7.3 liter uh, V8 turbo diesel engine. 2003 was the last year they made it and they actually split it in half. In the middle of 2003 they started making the 6 liter uh, which are notorious for having a lot more problems so you have to pay the extra money to do the EGR delete uh, and various other things to it. The 7.3 is one of the most famous and popular diesel engines ever made. Uh, so that was a big criteria in me buying this vehicle is that it had that engine in it uh, and it had that turbo on it so I, I have enough power to move this thing around. The base weight of this without my stuff in it is 10,500 pounds so you really need some torque to be able to move this thing up the hills. So if you notice on the vehicle it does have what appears to be smaller tires. These are the ones that came on it when I bought it. I love the tires uh, even though they're a little bit smaller because um, the fuel mileage is about 10 miles to the gallon. Uh, so the upside is I got a badass 7.3 turbo diesel engine. The downside is I get about 10 miles to the gallon. Uh, having the smaller tires on it, I feel like maybe helps it out, but they are, they are all terrains. I drove this thing from Pennsylvania to San Diego in a crazy snowstorm where they declared a state of emergency uh, up in Pennsylvania and, and people were snowed in through Ohio. And I was able to throw this in four, four wheel drive high uh, and cruise about 45 miles an hour. While I saw a ton of other accidents, I was able to just cruise and take it easy. Uh, and get through it. I also want to say one of the most popular questions I get is do people wave me down? Uh, the answer is no. Nobody's really flagged me down except for one guy that thought I worked at the park that I was in. Um, but I'm not a medic so I, I hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> so one more thing about the solar. Um, when you're putting on your solar panels you need to have a gap under the panels that way the air can flow through to keep them from uh, burning up on the inside of the panel. I was nervous about drilling holes into the roof of my ambulance just because I, as a novice builder, I didn't want to have leaks. Uh, so what I decided to do is on Amazon, they have these Smitty built um, rain gutter racks. So if your van has rain gutters on it, like this one, you can actually get bolt-ons up there. So I went with the aluminum 90 degree uh, aluminum rods to go across and I bolted to the bolt-on rain gutter mounts and then the, pan the panels are bolted onto that so there's no holes actually drilled into the top of the vehicle except for where the wires run into the back to go and connect to the uh, charge controller. Welcome to the inside of the van. So this is my travel vehicle and it gets messy. There's a lot of dirt in here. Um, you know, I was just really authentic about it. I did not wash the outside. I didn't clean the inside in here for the video. This is pretty much what it looks like. Um, so most of this is just a standard E350 van, uh, but this is where the cool stuff is right down here. If you can see this panel, I'll take you through how it works. Let me put the key in here. First of all, I'm gonna go ahead and crank it up because people love the sound of the 7.3. So I'm gonna give you a taste of what that's like. Hopefully you can hear that loud and clear through the microphone. So one of the first things that I decided to put in here when I bought it is a reverse camera and a stereo. The, the, the factory radio was just absolute junk. Uh, so I put in a touchscreen. I think it's a six or seven inch display. 
uh, with the reverse camera. I knew for sure if I didn't get a reverse camera that I was gonna end up backing up into a car, having an insurance claim and just causing a, a bunch of problems. I spent the money up front and got that added and it is awesome. It's awesome, awesome, awesome having that if you have a vehicle of this size. Um, if you move down to here, this is the factory ambulance stuff. So there's a master switch on the left side of the seat. So if I flip that on, you're gonna see all of this come on. Here you can see the volts uh, of the battery whenever, especially when it's charging, you're gonna see the number come up. Uh, this is the amount of amps. I don't know if this is accurate because I do see it fluctuate from wild, crazy numbers. So there's something going on in my panel system, but for the most part, it's accurate. Earlier when I talked about the codes from the back, the, people, the medics in the back, they could hit a switch and send a code red, yellow, or green, the patient code to let the driver know or let the passenger know, hey, there's something going on. And if you're a medic, you probably know exactly what that is. I have no clue. This is the module disconnect. So when it says module, it's actually referring to the box in the back. So this switch is gonna turn that the power onto that panel that we saw in the back. This and this are the, uh, the primary and the secondary lights around the top of the vehicle. Over here, this is one of my favorite things that this comes with is it has floodlights on the left, rear, and right side of the vehicle. So for me, whenever I'm out camping or I'm setting up a spot in the middle of the night, I can flip that on and I have a massive amount of light all the way around the vehicle to see what I'm doing. Um, this is my backup alarm switch. So when I start this up and I put it in reverse, it's gonna be just like a big rig where it's beeping on the way back and I can tap that one time and it stops the beeping. So if I, if I don't need it, I don't have to listen to it. And then this is just the heat and air for the rear and I'm not really too sure what the rest of this does. So if you're a medic, feel free to comment on this and let me know how, how to use the rest of this stuff. Another popular question I get is, can I change the lights from red to green? I absolutely cannot do that, and I don't even think this has a feature to do that. I'm sure they took that out before I bought the vehicle. This is the PA, so they took the radio out when I bought it, but the PA does work, so uh, I don't know if I'm at an event or something and we're trying to rally people together, I could use that, but I haven't made use of it yet. When I first got this truck, I was super nervous to drive it. Um, I was, because I was up in small mountain roads in Pennsylvania, uh, one, you know, one lane to share with the other car, and, uh, and this size of vehicle, and it has the smaller tires on it, it, it felt a little bit squirrely. Um, but after, after driving it for a few weeks, especially driving it across the country, I got used to it. Um, and now I, I drive it and, you know, I'm, right now we're, we're located by downtown Denver where I just came from. Uh, I was driving in downtown San Diego on really narrow roads and I've really gotten the hang of it. So, um, just like any other big van, you get a sprinter, a bus, whatever you're driving, uh, it's going to, it's going to take some getting used to. Thank you, Chris, and thank you, YouTube, for uh, coming and taking a tour of my van. Uh, if you wanna keep up with me, what I'm gonna be doing is posting videos of the entire build of this. Uh, even the stuff you already see, I'll be posting videos of how I did it. Um, it'll give everybody, anybody an opportunity to come ask questions about my build, about what it's like to live in an ambulance, if you should get an ambulance, what type of van you should get. My YouTube channel is Purelit, P-U-R-E-L-I-T, uh, and then you'll just see a face of me uh, right there on the front so you can click on that uh, and, and join me if you'd like to. My Instagram is where I'm most active and that is earth underscore medic, earth underscore medic. Um, and I mostly post stories on there. I also post the build and uh, you get to see Bailey, which is the most important piece of this whole thing. So if you'd like to, if you're interested in what you see, um, follow along. Mm -hmm.